All right. So welcome to episode number one of the Ecom Profit Podcast. The last episode was zero zero. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Um, so I think this is episode one of the Ecom Profit Podcast, and we're back. We're back. Um, we're gonna be doing this every week. So. I don't know. We're going to talk about a little bit of different things here. Yeah. We were just going through the video, uh, the last podcast, and we saw some some people had questions. So I think what we're going to do from now on is kind of like whatever you comment on the last video, we'll probably just yeah. pick it up there and answer questions or see what people are most interested in. If there's something that you're interested in, make sure that you ask in the questions. Also, before you continue, make sure you subscribe, hit the little notification bell, like, share this video everywhere on all your social media because everyone has to see this. We don't want you know to have any uninformed people out there. We want everybody to know what is going on and you know just be informed. So without any further ado, I don't know if Richard but, has any, yeah. any introductory words. No, let's here. just get right to it. I think we're, we, we're going to talk about our struggles after we started making money because, I, and I don't know what their name is, someone asked in, in the first ever podcast video, what was the question and who was it from? So, uh, we got some questions here. Um, thank you guys. Uh, I see a, a few people here. So, you, Day Boss, um, uh, Rico, uh, Mohammed, a, a few of you guys here, Kang. Um, so you guys were all very positive. You guys were just saying thank you guys, really enjoyed the gains, said some nice things. Um, Daniel said that this is really good. So really thank you guys for your kind words. Uh, we appreciate your comments. We go through these comments. We, you know, we're seeing your feedback. So really appreciate you guys commenting on this. Um, Caleb said first. Uh, but yeah, we're gonna we're gonna keep going through these comments and we're gonna be finding what you guys want to learn more about. So, speaking of difficulties and stuff, so I think Gaines Kigz- Danes Quixote, Quixote, right. what was the question? Like like the book, he didn't really say he didn't ask a question, but he said talk about your most recent difficult periods since finding success. People think that's that once you make it, it's smooth sailing. Right. So, um, all right. So I'll start it off. First of all, once you make it is when you go through your hardest struggles because prior to making it, your only struggle is trying to make it, right? So it's, it's really straightforward. But um, once you make it, that you start putting systems in place, you start doing things, you start scaling your business, that's when you really um, hit the hurdles, right? That people are always talking about. The, the hurdles that people hit prior to like becoming successful, I don't think they're as big as the one that you hit after because at first you don't have anything to lose i mean well, you, you don't have shit to lose right you're just trying to make it but once you have something that you hit one of these hurdles it really hits you hard um you get a lot more stressed than than you were before um and we can talk about some of ours we've hit a lot we we've hit a lot of hurdles uh we've been in business for three years and i would say that each year there has been at least one major fuck up yep that we've had at least one and then it's surrounded by a lot of little fuck ups yeah. but there's always been that one major like boom that we just remember that year and that that was the fuck up of 2016 we have the fuck up of 2017 and then the fuck up of 2018 we know all of them yeah so yeah there's every year there's there's something that you know you wish you could have done done better and i think with experience i mean i don't think you ever truly make it no. I think people people say, oh yeah, you make it, you're successful, this and that. I mean, the way that you look at it is, I mean, yeah, sure, you're, you can you say you can say you're financially stable, and if that's what success means to you, then yeah, you're stable. Mm-hmm. I mean, you're 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 successful. But I mean, I think there's a thing that comes with it as well that you you kind of like you're not comfortable with with whatever end result you're at at the moment. Yeah. So you're never you never actually make it, and there's always like things that to be improved. Like once you think that you've made it, uh, I think that's when you're done. Like no, but like do you, you never really get to that point, right? Like you don't you never really like get to a point where you're like, okay, I'm good at this point for the rest of my life, and I'm not gonna do anything else other than just like stay here. I think you're always trying to like to do better. Right, to, right. To do better. And, right, exactly. So I I think there's really no like. Like there's no you, point of like you think so everyone has like the everyone thinks that that there's a certain place that when they get there it's like oh I made it I accomplished my goal but like really that goal it doesn't like it doesn't fulfill you for like 
for for like the rest of your life it'll fulfill yeah, you for like a week while. until yeah. you're just like all right what's the next what's, what's the next, what's yeah. next yeah. now yeah, what's the next um we can talk about i can start off with the 2016 was it 2016 so we, so i mean we were selling like all, all those so, bad things so so i mean i guess we can we can start chronologically yeah um because I, I think someone else also asked a question here and um king king actually king's in in, in our mm-hmm. program king asked he said failures that you, like he wants to know about failures that we faced and overcame in the beginning of our seven months uh oh, like before, prior before we started seeing growth in our business okay so we can start there uh hmm. before we even had any sort of success uh we'll start chronologically and then tie it in with the 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 issues we faced after we we became successful uh but before we even started trying to think there was a period i think issues there was a bunch of issues so honestly oh, like yeah no, no. Hon- honestly money was a big issue for us because you know we we were we were college kids at the time we didn't really have a, a full-time income we, we were working kind of like internship style jobs we wanted to you know start this business and we were we were like you know all the all of our savings were kind of going straight into our into the business honestly like it was it was pretty nice because we were you know we were still like under our parents like roof like for me at least i I didn't feel like if i lost all my money i was gonna have to go like live under a bridge or anything so in that sense you know i felt like comfortable not comfortable but I, i was like you know i was at ease in a way that like you know if all of this fails and you know I like and I mean still that's the case but I mean once you're older it's it's a little bit different but you know you feel like you have nothing to lose really you're like oh you know I'm giving this a shot um if if this doesn't work out then I'll that I'm fine but you know as time progresses and things start to work so I guess to to go off the se- the, the seven months of of struggles and things that that we faced that we had to overcome so I mean a lot of it was just not knowing right mm-hmm. we did, we didn't know we were uninformed we thought that we had the answers to to the e-commerce questions whether that was uh we knew what products were going to sell we know what a good store looked like we know we knew how uh how to advertise things properly and to be completely honest with you guys we had no fucking clue what we were doing no, yeah, but I think it's also that we thought we thought there was like a blueprint and we were trying like when we first like before we were always like trying to stay like within a box when we were doing things. Um, we were we were never trying new things like it was all um, very conventional way of doing it. Like when we bought when we bought the first program, um, we were like you remember that we were only trying to do like. Like it was very black and white. We were never testing, putting our own little like just into the ads. We were always just like doing what everyone else was doing, and it just wasn't working for us. And I think that's a that's one of the biggest reasons why, because why we lost money for seven months because we just kept doing the same shit over and over and over again. Like we like when you try something once and it doesn't work, it's okay to try it a second time. Um, and then if it doesn't work the second time, maybe you try it a third time. But after that, you just have to fucking move on and, and like just go to the next thing. And I think that for seven months we were just like like stuck on the same shit over and over again like all the only thing we were we were changing were the products that we were testing if you remember like we would test knives phone cases everything but it was all with the same exact method that kept failing over and over again but we kept doing it because we thought that was the only way of doing something so yeah we we did think that we knew how to do it um which we didn't we and we just had the wrong way of thinking we we were thinking like within this box of this is how e-commerce is done there's no other way and we're just going to make it work this way and i think that's what made us fail for a lot of the seven months um until we finally started using google and then the video remember i mean the video was like literally what what broke us well our our, one of our major breakthroughs was when we freaking tested one video our first video that we ever tested yeah yeah so at the time we, we were running a lot of picture ads on uh, and I think the big the big thing was people were saying, oh, you have to have a good picture ad with like a red border. With a red border, yeah, red I remember border. that shit. And we would get yeah. banned all the time because the red border was too thick. Yeah, yeah, the red border was too thick. And people were like, oh, you know, Facebook doesn't like red borders because, you know, it's spammy and this and that. And then everyone, like all the, all the, the, the gurus were like, oh, yeah, you got to use the red border. And we're like, oh, red border. And then, yeah, everything was a picture with a freaking red border. That's when yeah. you were a graphic designer back yeah. then. Yeah. But I mean, ex- ex- experimentally, it, it was, I mean, experimentation and anything is key. 
um, if you think about it, if you're like one of the first to implement any idea, whether it be, you know, uh, Apple with their computer or whatever it may be, when you're the first, you know, there, I mean, there's a lot of things that could go wrong. You know, you could completely flop on your face or, you know, you can be like a pioneer in, in what you do. So like the, what happened with the video was that no, not many people were advertising with video, not many people were advertising with Google. So when we started doing it, we were able to kind of like, you know, be pioneers in, in that sense of the word and be able to, you know, make money because not that many people were doing it. And, and, it, and it goes on like forever, you know, right now, you know what everyone else is doing sure like it works some stuff works some stuff you know is is but you're not standing out because you're just you know it's it's kind of like a like an imitation game so which which in a lot of cases you could get by but you're not gonna i, I don't think you're, there's gonna be like a big breakthrough if you're just copying other people no no so, you won't have a break you'll make money like you make money yeah we've, you'll made, make money. we've made money copying people i think a lot of people have but it won't it won't be like um like uh, an explosion yeah yeah like what we had but yeah i think that was the the, ma- the biggest issue that we had uh before we started making money and then um the first year that we started making money we got into trouble for selling um <laughs> and we've never said this for selling weed related products selling what weed related oh, products yeah. we were selling the the pipe yeah so so that that came that came um that came into fruition really really quickly so we started making some money um, honestly, I, I, I wasn't aware of like policies or anything like that. Yeah, I, we I, didn't know. We didn't I, know. I thought it was just like kind of like, oh, I can kind of sell whatever. Like if I find something on, on, AliExpress. on AliExpress, I can yeah. just kind of throw it up on Facebook. And it, and if it sells and I'm good, if it doesn't, whatever. I, I didn't really know any policies. Yeah. And now it's a lot more strict with what you yeah. can and can't sell. But at the time, we thought like we were selling some like weed smoking device. And it wasn't, um, it's not even like... We say weed, but it was just it was a tobacco smoking device. Smoking yeah, device. Yeah, yeah. Like you could put tobacco in it. Um our ad had a weed. I yeah, think our ad had our, a weed our in ad it. Had right? weed in it. Yeah. But um it it was like we were just like selling like you know, trying to just sell stuff. And um It was a, a product that we tested and yeah. it just blew up. Um and I think the first the first like hurdle that happened there was well we we ran it for a while and then Facebook yeah. finally caught on and was like, what the heck is and, this grass yeah. stuff that you're putting yeah. into this, into and this thing? And dude, like, and so think about it. When they caught, when they caught on, we were making money. So we're like, fuck, like we got to go around this. Like we didn't yeah. stop. We're like, okay, how do we, how do we go around this? Your first, our first in- instinct is never to like stop something because someone tells us to like yeah. to try to work around it yeah. somehow. And, um, yeah. So, uh, we got, I mean, just to give a rough estimate, we got like 30 ad accounts banned. Yeah, pages a, banned. Lazaro's banned on Facebook, by the way. Yeah, I'm he, banned. I'm yeah, for yeah. life. For life, banned. Banned for life on Facebook. I'm. I, there's a way around it. I'm just lazy. And I'm yeah. Gonna, I'm gonna there is. Yeah, um, you just gotta like have a different like. Don't use your same name and use yeah. a different email. Change your different identity. Phone, a different IP address. <laughs> I mean, if if the, if the, if yeah. like I still can't get an account, then that yeah. that would that would Too suck. But yeah, I mean, it's yeah. it's it, there's ways around it. At, at that was. Day. Yeah, that was actually our first major um, fuck up. I think we've had, yeah. we've had, th- is it three? Is it three or two? Well, that that was that was major that fuck was up number one. Number one, but it but it was the least because we didn't lose money. Yeah, it was just we weren't making money, so it, it got it got it, it got it got. I mean, it got hairy because we we're like we're making money, and then we're like, oh that yeah, this stops. is nice, we're making money, and yeah. then it all, all of a sudden it stops, and then we're like, oh fuck, like what the hell. But I mean, it doesn't like it. Did, it didn't stop us. It didn't deter us. It just kind of like we're like, oh, yeah. what the hell do we do now? Yeah. But that's just one of the things that that happens, and I think it happens to a lot of people that they'll mm-hmm. they'll get like shut down for selling one product, and then you know you just have to find yeah. a second product and a third product. And it it was it was good in a way because we kind of uh, just applied what we knew. Like, oh, we found this product. It was kind of like a like a it had like a wow factor to it. It had something that you know that wasn't very common. Like. Not a lot of people uh, mm-hmm. were advertising it. It yeah. was something. It had like something that stood out. Um, so I think that's why it did well. Um, so it helped us going forward. You know, we we're looking for products that were kind of like unique. That not not just products that you can just like go to Walmart and find them at Walmart or find like something very common. Uh, so that's kind of like the the fo- our focus shifted to those kinds of products. And I think from there we've been you know it's just building blocks. It helped us. 
Another big struggle that we ran into, uh, which was around the same time, was um, was PayPal. PayPal yeah. is, is a, is a huge... It, yeah, everyone runs into that one. It, it's, it's a huge struggle. And I mean, people, when they're starting, they're like, oh, yeah, like, I'm going to, you know, I have all this... Uh, paypal and this and that and like processors in general like mer your merchant accounts and when when you start doing drop shipping or anything uh, related to that sort of business there's a lot of like like they don't take to that sort of business very lightly so paypal for example will hold certain amounts of money from you so which they still to this day do um so that's one struggle that i guess it starts it started way back when and it's still something that we're currently dealing with now that's just part yeah. of the business when you have that sort of business model, they, they want to hold payments, they want to like hold the reserve because they think that your business is high risk so that you know that you're not stealing people's money. And if somebody wants a refund, you know, they have the, the funds to like dish out refunds to them. Um, so that that's that's another one that yeah. everyone deals with. That's uh, another major struggle that we had and and going chronologic in chronological order. PayPal is just a struggle that we always have. And we just can't take it off our backs. Yeah. But another struggle that we had was that we sold a copyrighted item and we got caught selling it. At the time, we didn't think it was copyrighted. Um, yeah. We knew that it was a brand, but we tried getting the product, repackaging it ourselves, rebranding it, putting a new name on it with like putting out basically white labeling the product. Yeah. But what we didn't know was that the product had a patent on the 3D design. So you guys have to be really careful when you're selling something if it has a patent, because if it's only a copyright, then yeah, you can rebrand it. If it has a patent on the actual design of the product, then you're screwed. You, you can't do anything with that. So. We thought we were good. We sold about a thousand, two thousand units, and then we got hit with a lawsuit. The lawsuit was for, it was only for like ten thousand dollars, and we thought we were we were off the hook. But then um, a whole mess of customers started putting chargebacks. Yeah, um, they were saying that we were selling like, yeah, it was like false advertising. False that we advertising. Selling, that we were selling like fake products, yeah. counterfeit goods, and then it just, I mean, sh shit show. Uh, um, so you know, it's like attorneys involved money left and right every you know it's it's expensive um some stuff that we're not really accustomed to um you know we, we were used to you know just running this business from our, our computers like not really dealing with with other people other than, than our employees uh, lawyers involved a bunch of a bunch of bullshit and very expensive stuff um yeah yeah it was about ten thousand dollars and then like another like like i would say like maybe like another like five through ten in chargebacks which which led to our next and, and one of the most expensive fuck ups that we've had, which was that we were ignoring the BBB. Um, that's probably the latest one. Um, we actually just got through that one. Like, I yeah. mean, we're signing the paperwork now. Yeah. For so that, so that, yeah. that, that was, that was something that, I mean, I wish, I wish I would have, I wish I would have kind of seen the signs um so i think richard was getting like letters in the mail like he would get letters in the mail and he'd be like bro look i'm getting these bbb letters yeah and this and that and then uh i remember scenes like some like influencers and like gurus and stuff like that and they'd be like oh yeah the bbb you don't have to worry about them like they have like no no power over like your business like it's like a third party blah blah, blah. but what people don't tell you is that the bbb actually if, if, you know, if they see a lot of complaints, they'll actually go to, like, the mm -hmm. attorney general of your state mm -hmm. and they'll be like, look, this business is doing shady wow. business. You should check up on them and see what the hell is going on. So um, we had a, a good amount of complaints from copyrighted products and selling, like, shipping times that were, like, god awful, which was another problem yeah. that you, you run into when you first start off. If you don't know, like, if you don't know how to talk to your suppliers, if you think that, you know... 30 day shipping times are fine. So, I mean, it, it's, it, there were all like these little things that just kind of like amounted to like this BBB complaint bullshit that um, kind of blew up in our face. And then, you know, it just became really freaking expensive. And that's something that, you know, if I could go back and, or just, you know, tell my previous younger self, hey, look out for this, or, you know, make sure you don't do that. Um, there's there's a few things that I, that I would do probably number one is don't sell anything copyrighted because it's like short term you know short short term success uh, or short term you know you're gonna make some money but lo long term it's gonna come to bite you in the ass number two you know try to comply with like you know like with shipping times with delivery times like if you know 
at the end of the day, like your customer can like make or break your business. If you're, if all your customers are complaining to the BBB about your business being shady, being bad, like, you know, you're not resolving their issues. It's going to come, it's going to come back to haunt you. So whether it's through the BBB or just have, having a good customer support team or reaching out to customers and trying, you know, to help them in whatever form or, you know, talking to your supplier, getting better shipping times, having your product fulfilled from the US, whatever it may be, uh, try to make that happen because it, it can it can really become a shit show for you. Um, is there anything, any like, any like little tips that you would, like things well, that you wish yeah. that you knew like back then that... Yeah, so... I mean, just to get back to the issue, to to explain it, um, to explain it a little more, uh, don't don't be like don't be worried if you're getting you know like uh, like ten five complaints, um, every like six months or something. Still like, address got, them. I think you should. Still yeah, yeah, address uh, them. yeah. You can you can address them, but it's not it's not a big deal. Like people get those all the time. We got we got like six hundred, so it, it was a little different. I've I know some people have gotten a hundred and they're still good. Um, even though they, you, you should address them and you should answer back to them, just like any other claim, just address it, even though, even if you handle it internally, which is what we were doing, because realistically, um, it wasn't, the, it, it wasn't that we were ignoring the BBB complaints. It's just that we were handling them ourselves. So uh, people would complain on the BBB and they would complain on our website. We would handle it on the website. The customers were okay we either refunded them or returned the item but the bbb complaint was still open so that that was the biggest flaw that we had it wasn't it wasn't so it was that we were just like, like kind of like throwing the bbb to a side like 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 their shit because we already handled it we handled it with our customer and they're like a third party so we didn't give a shit about them so yeah what ended up happening was that they they forwarded all the 600 complaints to the attorney general and then they started they started trying to figure out information about Laz and I and they were basically trying to sue us now it didn't get to the point where they did sue us because we we weren't we weren't scamming people we weren't we weren't doing anything wrong the only thing wrong really that we did was that we just didn't tell them that we were like that we were answering the the complaints directly yeah. with the customer so they didn't know that they thought that all those 600 complaints were still unanswered so obviously the compl you guys know the complaints with drop shipping they're always that you're either scamming that you haven't received your product you lost your money and all of those complaints were answered either either we gave them you know we gave them a refund we we give them a discount code we make the customer happy at the end of the day when it comes to our, our drop shipping stores but that was the, the biggest issue that we had. Um, they didn't get to sue us, thank God, right? We had to pay a penalty. Yeah. Um, it was a big penalty. It wasn't like a detrimental, but it was big. Um, we actually haven't even paid it yet. We, we, we will pay it. Um, but the, yeah, there is a penalty involved. Um, and just just cost of lawyers. Guys, lawyers cost a shitload of money. We had to pay our lawyers a whole mess of money. We had to pay the attorney general a whole mess of money. And that doesn't include the penalty that we have to pay on top of yeah. that. So It's very expensive. Yeah. I mean. So, like, yeah, if you guys are going to learn from our mistakes is respond to the BBB, even if you handle it internally. Uh, Laz was saying, don't sell copyrighted items. It's not worth it. It's literally, you're making money for whoever owns the copyright. It's guys, if someone owns a copyright and you're selling their item, you're basically, you're kind of stealing from them. You're stealing their profits that they can be making. So they're going to sue you for those profits. Trust me, they're going to get their money back somehow. So that's two things. Answer back to the BBB. Don't sell copyrighted items. Keep your PayPal up to date. Um, by what I say up to date is answer all your, all your, all the negative um disputes disputes yeah. that you have all, all that stuff. uh we have we literally have more than a, more than six figures held in paypal right now and when i say held it's it's in a 180 day revolving reserve limit, reserve yeah. that so if we get paid today they take two percent of that payment and we get paid in 180 days so it, the it's balance is always 2%. there it's more yeah it's like 15 or 15 yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a lot. Fuck, dude. Yeah, it's, it's fifteen. A, yeah, it's a lot. It's fifteen. A lot. So they, yeah, yeah, they they hold your money and you're kind of like tied. You know, your arms are tied behind your back because, you know, if you remove PayPal, then your your conversion rates go down because a lot of people do use PayPal. Um, I would say probably like fifty percent of customers use PayPal, so it's kind of something yeah, that you a, need to like offer. Huge, if, if you take out PayPal, you lose half of your conversions yeah. right off the bat. Like. You go from two percent conversion to one percent. It's it's ridiculous. Yeah, and and we know because we tried it. We, yeah, yeah, we, we yeah we we went through the fuck PayPal stage. Yeah, we were like, oh, like we're yeah, fuck PayPal. Yeah. Oh, they suck. Blah, blah. And then we're yeah. like, yeah, you know, this is kind of like something we just have to deal with. It. Yeah, and now we we love. Honestly, I love PayPal. 
without yeah. PayPal, our business wouldn't be where it's at today. And PayPal, you just need PayPal, and you learn to love it, even if like they put a reserve on you. Yeah. It doesn't like I don't. Yeah, really it's just a, a it's just the cost of of doing business. Which, yeah, I mean every every business has its its cost, and this is just part. This is just one of them. Yeah. Um, oh, another 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 screw up that we had was when we got the BBB complaints. We're banned. We're <laughs> we're banned from using uh, payment processors. Uh, yeah. We sold. So, guys, if you're if you're going to scale, like stupid scale, like we scaled from like 400k a month to like 2.3 million dollars in the next month, please have systems in place. Yeah. Yeah. Hire people, customer support. Hire like wherever you have someone working, just hire someone yeah. to help them. Like yeah, you, you, literally you need, double you up need, on your you team, triple. Team. Yeah. Um, we didn't do it. We thought we can do it with like. It was five like, people yeah not even five it was like probably like three yeah of us. four three yeah <laughs> we thought we could do it and we got we got on this thing called the match list or the blacklist for payment processors so now we basically have to use a, a run-through entity we use an, another business that collects all the payments and then that business pays us because Laz and i can't um we're on the blacklist yeah we're on the blacklist so <laughs> so it's kind of funny how that happened they they t- i remember like we we're talking to to oh, and we had to pay a hundred k fine. Oh yeah, yeah, hundred. We had to pay a hundred k fine to yeah. to, no, the, to Visa. To it was to yeah, oh, fuck Visa. Yeah, Visa and Mastercard. And Mastercard. Mastercard. Mastercard had their own fine. Because, yeah, you know, it was like twenty k. Yeah, yeah, it was it, like twenty k. Yeah, it, ridiculous. But I remember like the, oh, we talk. We we're talking to like our, our our current processors, and we were we're talking to them, and we're like, oh yeah, like I don't know, we keep on applying for all these processing. Like Stripe, I think we were yeah, playing yeah. a Stripe, and they're like, "Oh, they keep shutting us down. Like, what the hell?" And then they're like, "Oh, let's 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 do some digging." Yeah. They come back, they're like, "Oh, guys, it's because you guys are on on the match list." And then we're like, "What the heck is a match list?" It's like, yeah. it's like a blacklist for people who. You it's know, like if you file bankruptcy, like yeah. you're like on. It's it's like if you have well, the reason why it happens is if you have like over one percent like chargeback rate or something like that. Basically, you're at risk of going into matches. I think our chargeback rate was like something stupid. It was like three, three yeah. or four. It was yeah. it was so bad, and it was. It wasn't because like it literally wasn't. It wasn't because we were trying to do wrong. I don't think anyone like it's like it Kev, was, Kevin Hart just had his new thing. He's like, oh, you don't just go outside one day and say it's a great day to fuck up today. It's, yeah, it's yeah, fuck yeah. up season, right? Yeah. We it's because we weren't ready. Like we 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 moved fast. We broke yeah. things and yeah. we weren't ready to yeah. to sell that much. Yeah, we we didn't have the inventory. Like the the factory couldn't have the inventory our spent. supplier was sleeping in the factory our su- like yeah our supplier was sleeping in the factory the shipping times were horrible like it was just like very yeah. poorly executed yeah um, we just had not, we didn't have the right system in yeah. place that's something that's yeah. honestly if, if you guys are going to take anything from this is just have the right system in place like build a system before yeah and the way to build a system I don't, even, I don't even know how to say that because then because we're always saying taking perfect action how the yeah. hell can you take in perfect action well, if now if we're saying, oh, build the well, system first? I, I, well, I'm, like the way I think, I think what you should do is uh, let's say some things are going well for you and you want to grow your business even more. How, how do you grow your business? You know, you, you get a, you get a team, people to manage certain tasks. So whether it be customer support, fulfillment, uh, yeah. you have somebody, um, doing all your disputes, complaints, yeah. making sure that the customer, customer support is huge. Yeah. Um, you might gotta make sure your suppliers on the same page as you as far as like shipping times, that you that they can fulfill the inventory because that was one of the big issues for us. We were selling all this shit that we didn't we even have didn't, inventory. We didn't even have inventory. We were selling we, too much. We were, yeah, we didn't we even have inventory. Much. Dude, like when China can't produce enough shit for you to sell, you know you're selling a lot. Yeah, yeah. So, so those are things that you yeah. gotta like make sure. Um, you probably don't need it from the from the beginning, but if your if your business is growing, your team has to grow, your support system has to grow, your your you know your your whole yeah your system the whole infra- uh, infrastructure, infrastructure has yeah to grow. everything has to grow with it. Yeah. Um, and that's you don't have to do it from the beginning, like you no, said. No, yeah, it's just like, a, it's just part of the don't don't let it keep you guys from starting. And, and that and that too. That's why that's why that's why. Um, it scares me sometimes because people are like, oh yeah, like I want, like how do I blow up my store like in a week? And I'm like, I'm like, trust me, you, you don't, don't want to blow up your store in a week yeah. because you're gonna get a thousand orders. Yeah. Your supplier ain't gonna can't fulfill that. Your you don't have a customer support team. Pay- PayPal, PayPal, is, gonna, PayPal sure. is gonna freeze all your money, and then you're stuck. You're all right, so we actually just realized that we went over. And I know it just cut right there, and, and this looks kind of weird now, but um. 
we just went over the podcast. Our camera has a thirty minute recording timer or whatever. Yeah, and we were we were so like enthusiastic and just and so we were, into yeah, what we were doing. We, that just, we kept just kept going. going. Fuck. Um, the six things that that you should take are Jesus Christ, and and I know you're only watching it once, but this is my second time repeating, and this kind of sucks. Um, <laughs> we were just saying how depressing this podcast yeah, was because we were it's talking about all this like shit. sad shit, all the mistakes we made. Mm-hmm. Like some of these mistakes, like we wish we like we didn't even like like have to say it again. Say them again, <laughs> like, like Voldemort. It's, it's like we just erased them. them from our minds, and it just yeah. comes back. But um, well, okay, so. I'm gonna go over it really quick. Um, don't sell copyrighted. Uh, by the way, I don't know if I already. I don't know. I don't know what I've said now, what I haven't said. But if we would, if we wouldn't have done these mistakes, then we would have had an extra million dollars in our bank yeah. account right now. So it's it's a so take these million valuable valuable yeah, million tips. dollar tips right here. So don't sell copyrighted items. You're gonna lose the money. Have really good customer support. Have a good uh system in place if you're gonna scale up. There's three more. Don't ignore the BBB. Don't ignore the BBB. That's number four. Shit, what was the other one? PayPal? Oh, pay, yeah, PayPal. Mm-hmm. PayPal is something that everyone's going to have to deal with. You yeah, guys will get to used to it. it. Yeah. PayPal holding your money. PayPal. Um, if you don't use PayPal, your your conversion yeah. rates are going to completely shit themselves. I think it was just like the chargeback rate, which has yeah, to do chargeback yeah, rate. Yeah. Make sure your chargeback rate is low, or else you're gonna pay a shit ton in fines to so credit card companies. Yeah, pay 120k. Um, um, but yeah, I think I mean yeah. Let's wrap it up here before. Let's before wrap it up this before the shit stops again, and then we have yeah. to do this all over again. But yeah, guys, sorry, sorry for the depressing podcast. I know um, it was depressing. I think especially for like a first episode but um it's just something that we wanted to get out of the way because now when we start talking about all the good things we don't want you guys to think that we just like spawned into that like good scenario where we're making all the money and and we don't struggle anymore we still struggle every single day um we we go through shit like we're going through shit now and we're gonna go through even more shit that's gonna get it's gonna get even harder like it just gets harder it gets yeah. harder as, as you go along. Like our struggles have gotten harder. If you think back on it, like I wish that our, that our issue was that we couldn't sell an item because it was copyright and we had to yeah. take it down. Like, I wish yeah. that was our issues yeah. now. Um, yeah. But it'll it'll get harder. Again, depressing it, podcast. It's it's all like manageable things. You just got. I think it's just like a more of a mindset thing that you just can't yeah. like let these things like get to you. I mean, it's just kind of like, okay, how do I solve this this issue and how do I not do it again and how do I yeah. fix it from fix this from happening again. And if, if you think that way, I think you, you're you like, you're making progress. So mm-hmm. that's that's just the way I, I think we, we go about things and how we think that you should approach it. Um, and if you do that, if you do that, if you, if you know, if you can avoid mistakes before they even arise, then more power to you, you're going to save a lot of money too. Yep. Yeah. So yeah, very depressing podcast, but very valuable to say the least. Yep. Um, I hope you guys imp- implement all the stuff that we talked about. Um, oh, there was one more thing I wanted to say. Um, guys, I, I don't know. I, I don't know if I'm going to say this twice, but this whole podcast, what, we went off of one comment that someone put in, into the into the comment yeah, section. Yeah. Last little, like we didn't know what we were going to talk about before we sat down at the table to do the podcast. We just decided when we saw the comment. So make sure that you comment below this one. To, to so that we can see what you guys want us to talk about next. Yeah, what we'll, we'll, what will happen? The exact thing that will happen is that we'll go through the comments. We'll see one that you know it's a good topic, and we'll talk and about we'll it. talk about it. Yeah. So, so leave your comments down below what you guys want to want us to talk about, yeah. and we will we'll cover it. Um, we and read, we'll pick someone new yeah, too. We yeah. won't pick the same person every single week. Right, and we read all the comments. We yeah. we read all of them. Um, you know, whether you guys are saying oh like awesome job. Or if you guys are giving us some tips, or if you guys yep. are just saying like just thoughts in general, we we, we read them and we appreciate every yep. single one of the comments. Um, but yeah, that that will give us you know they'll give us ideas on what to talk about and you know whatever you guys want to listen, listen, us talk like listen to us talk about that's yeah. what, that's what's gonna happen here. So yeah, so yeah, just let us know, let us know, and yep. we we're open to everything. At the end of the day, we're just being completely honest with you guys. We're just being ourselves. And we're just sharing our experiences, our thoughts, our ideas. Um, 
Yeah. That's that's what's happening here on this podcast. But yeah, guys, I'm gonna go ahead. We're gonna go ahead and end it here. So make sure to comment, like, and subscribe on this podcast. Uh, comment what you want to hear us talk about next time. Like it if you liked it. If you didn't like it, don't dislike it, please. Don't be a, don't be a douchebag. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that's that's it for this podcast. So yeah, podcast episode one is done. All right, man. Now we gotta go to the party. We gotta go to the party, man. The pizza party. The pizza party.